Around the world, lockdown measures aimed at stopping the spread of the coronavirus means restricting people's movements to the confines of their own homes. However, this has led to one unfortunate repercussion, an increase in domestic violence. What happens then when a home is no longer safe? You know, lockdowns and quarantines are essential to suppressing COVID-19, but they can trap women with abusive partners. Over the past weeks, as economic and social pressures and fear have grown, we have seen a horrifying global surge in domestic violence. I urge all governments to make the prevention and redress of violence against women a key part of their national response plans for COVID-19. In Singapore, AWARE has seen a 150% increase in distress calls made in a single day compared to a year ago. With families cooped up in a confined space for longer hours than we're used to, it's not hard to imagine more frequent and heightened instances of conflict and disagreements. Even if a family has no history of violence, the circuit breaker could still create friction and cause tempers to flare. But what is contributing to the violent outburst? Firstly, important to understand what is domestic violence, right? A lot of people think about it as, you know, someone getting hit and may perhaps think of it as a, a one-off type incident or, you know, as an event. But when you understand domestic violence, it's actually a pattern of abusive behavior that one person uses to exert and maintain control over another. Right, it's a bit like bullying, right? Bullies, you we understand, are people who actually are not are feeling insecure. They try to overcompensate for that by controlling someone that they can control, right? So that's the psychology. Social organizations are stepping up their support channels to increase accessibility for victims. There are multiple hotlines that victims can call if they need advice or even somebody to talk to. But things are not always this straightforward. When victims face dilemmas about their relationships with their abusers, they can be broadly grouped as love, hope, and fear. Despite the abuse, many victims still have feelings of love for the abuser. They have a history together and have shared many good memories. Abusers may make promises after violent episodes that it will not happen again. This brings victims' hopes up that the abusers will change for the longer term. They will even take on the burden of helping their abusers change. During violent episodes, fears about their safety and the safety of their loved ones, including children, are heightened. Even when the violence subsides, victims' practical considerations of leaving the abuser may be amplified. They become fearful of the undesirable consequences. For example, there's finances, children custody battles, and if they even have a place to stay. From an outsider's perspective, the violence may be clear to us, but for victims, the manipulative nature of abusive relationships makes it hard for victims to leave. I contacted a brave victim who broke free of her abusive cycle and is currently residing at Star Shelter with her son. It was interesting to note that in Wuhan, right, after the um, things had calmed down, immediately, right, for the next month, the number of divorces just uh, increased significantly, right? So this is the kind of thing that you can expect as well. During the circuit breaker, many people actually are not able to call for help. And after that, there will be a whole lot of people seeking help. At the end of the day, there is no excuse for domestic violence. But if you find yourself worrying about your own safety at home, 
Make sure to stay connected with your trusted contact. Establish a code word, call the police, and escape if it becomes too dangerous. It is not easy to walk away from home, but the number one priority is ultimately your safety.